Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one I'm filming in another hotel that I'm in now in Busan here in the southeast corner of South Korea and we're going to have a look at another one of the local craft breweries here. I did actually go and visit this brewery's facility and have a little look around so you will see a, a brewery visit video for these guys at some point around the time that this video was published so go and check that out if you get the chance. It was really nice to go and visit this one. So for this review we are going to return to Gorilla. Gorilla Brewing Company and I'm having a taste of their Hop Bomb today. So this one comes in at 8.5% and it is a double IP. It's supposed to be really quite nice this one and I have to admit when I was in the bar and actually tried uh, some of their beers on tap I was very impressed with the standard that these guys had. So really looking forward to trying something that's a little bit more kind of adventurous and bold than the beers that I tried before and hopefully it's a good one and again I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews and videos involving Gorilla Brewing Company. Very first time I'm reviewing one of their beers on the channel, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from the Different countries. There is one there for all the South Korean beers that I'm reviewing for you at the moment and I hope that I can continue to add to that review list regularly and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Gorilla Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes that I've written. So Gorilla Brewing Company, as I mentioned to you, are based in Busan in South Korea and they were founded back in 2015 by two English guys. This was Andy Green and Paul Edwards and the brewery are based in the Gwangan area, quite close to the Gwangali beach in fact, but they started out with a very small brew pub that was located at the far eastern end of the beach and at this time they were only brewing very small 100 litre batches and the brewery itself could actually be seen through a glass window uh, just behind the bar itself. The bar in that time only had six different taps. Uh, later on they actually recruited uh, Callum Bennett who succeeded uh, Paul as the head brewer and he had been the head brewer of Crate Brewery in London as well but he later became a partner in the brewery from what I understand. In March of 2017 though they moved to a new brewery which is closer to Gwangali which has the brewery downstairs and also a much l larger bar area. You'll see that in the video uh, that I made when I visited there too but they serve food, uh, they're well known for their pizza and they also host things like beer yoga classes and, and uh, live music and stuff like that as well so it's a really really interesting company this one. So the name Gorilla apparently was chosen for the brewery because it's the same in English as it is in Korean and these guys are also now growing their own hops as well and as of July 2019 they've produced 27 different types of beer and a variety of different styles as well. That comes to you from Untapped. But um, yeah this was all the information I was really able to find out about the brewery. Just now a shout out to Kansai Beer Lovers blog for this one. I was surprised to find that you know um, a Japanese blogger was the best source of information for this brewery. They didn't mention all that much about the brewery on the their, uh, on their website and it was Kansai Beer Lovers that helped me get all of that information for you. So I do apologise if any of it is out of date or whatever but that was all I was able to find for the moment. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Gorilla Brewing Company at the moment. I know that their beers are very good and like I said, I'm very curious to try one that's just a little bit more kind of bold and adventurous. So I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one then. So this can, from what I understand, is just you know a basic one that they, they make in the brewery, it's not got any of the special artwork or anything. Their artwork is really quite impressive, actually, and you'll see that if you check out my uh, bar brewery visit video. I'm not sure what I'll call it exactly yet, but if you check out that video, you will see the actual proper Gorilla Brewing Company branding. But like I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is an 8.5% double IPA, and uh, it should be really nice. So I'll just give it a quick wipe down here and get rid of the condensation, because that will annoy the camera a little bit, but let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. Really curious to see how this turns out. A little 330 milliliter can on this one incidentally. That looks pretty bloody good I have to say. So when I was at the brewery I tried their blonde ale, the British stout, uh, I think it was the Gorilla IPA and I also tried um, a Raspberry Weizen and actually the Raspberry Weizen and the British Stout were the ones that I enjoyed the most and I'm really curious to see how uh, you know how this IPA goes together. Now this glass I just rinsed out 
before I did the review, so there's a lot of carbonation visible on this one. It can be a little bit funny like that sometimes. But yeah, if I hold this beer up to the light, it's a really kind of bright, medium, orangey amber colour, this one. I'm not sure how good the light in here is, and I have found this when I've been filming over here in Asia. It is a little bit difficult to get good light for uh, for filming in some of these rooms, just because there's not a lot of uh, natural light comes into room in Asia, which is the thing. But yeah, um, you know, it looks very, very nice. I'm smelling some nice juicy fruit off this one straight away. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see that this one, is quite hazy. I'm not sure from just going from appearance whether this will be more of a West Coast IPA or a New England type double IPA, but we'll be able to tell that from the flavour, I'm sure. But yeah, let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Nothing particularly surprising about this beer when you consider what style it is. Oh, right. I suspect from aroma, this one is going to be a, a New England style IPA. So straight away, you're going to get some, there's a good bit of wheat coming out of the, the malt basin here. You can definitely smell a nice little bit of that wheaty quality in there. There is a little bit of a note, you know, but to me the malt base is being dominated by the, the wheaty side of things. It's just got a little bit of that um, kind of sharpness to it that you can sometimes get from wheat. It definitely has a little bit of that. Um, almost citrusy character that you can get out of wheat sometimes. Um, but yeah, you can also detect a little bit of the oaty creaminess. And um, for me, there's also a little touch of like, um, there's also a little bit of a biscuity note coming out of this one. McVitie's digestives come into mind. Um, or cookies. I'm not sure. I'm never sure which word to use biscuit or cookies. I'm not sure whether it's American English or uh, European or Australian English that Koreans are more familiar with. Probably a mixture. But. Um, yeah, definitely a little bit of a sort of cookie, biscuity note coming out of this one. Nice oaty notes, like I say, but really for me that malt base is dominated by the kind of wheaty side of things. So, um, yeah, that's a really interesting um, aroma out of this one. There is The biscuity notes that are in this one are a little bit reminiscent of Maris Otter, and I wouldn't be surprised if they've used a little bit of Maris Otter in here. I was mentioning in my um, bar video that I did when I was reviewing these beers, I was like, I was tasting this beer and was like, oh, that's Maris. I think that might be Maris Otter, and then when I went up to the, the back of the brewery at the end and had a look, there was a load of bag of Maris Otter sitting there. So, yeah, it shows you my palate is actually quite decent, so I was proud of, my, of myself for that. But, um, yeah, this is a really nice smelling beer this one in terms of its malt base. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, it's quite interesting. So for me, um, I think there's a good little bit of passion fruity note coming out of this one. Um, when I opened the beer up I was wondering, is there a bit of galaxy in there? Um, so yeah, a little bit of passion fruit. Um, I think a little bit of a mango kind of note to the beer as well, which is really nice. It's got those kind of stronger, more punchy tropical fruits to it, but at the same time, it has a little bit of that kind of lighter tropical juicy note too. The green side of the hops for me is leaning towards the, the grassy side of things. It does have a good little bit of a floral note in there as well, which is mixing in with those darker tropical fruits that I was talking about, the passion fruit. Um, but yeah, the green side for me really, it does lean more towards the grassy side of things and the beer becomes more and more juicy the more of it that you smell as well. So yeah, the aroma of this one um, has everything that you would expect of a double IP. And like I say, just going by the aroma, I heavily suspect that this is more of a, a New England style double IPA rather than anything else. But you know, it looks like a really, really nice beer. It smells like a very, very nice beer. As I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it. But I'm ready to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Hop Bomb, a double IPA coming in at 8.5% from Gorilla Brewing Company here in Busan in South Korea. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skol, Gombe. Yeah, that's pretty damn solid, I have to say. Now, this is another brewery, incidentally, that was recommended to me by Josie at, uh, at Josie's Bottle Shop down on Jeju. And, um, you know, she sent me in the direction of some really good stuff. So a huge thank you to Josie for pointing me towards Gorilla Brewing as well. I've been impressed with the beers that I've tried from these guys. Uh, she pointed me in the direction of Wild Wave and uh, Galmegi as well, actually. Yeah, that's really pretty bloody good, I have to say. So, big thumbs up to uh, to Gorilla Brewing Company for this one. Let's just try 
and break the flavour of this one down a little bit then. So straight away with this beer, you're going to feel that nice, smooth, wheaty quality, just blank at the middle of your tongue. On top of that, um, you're going to, I think there is a little touch of a, an oaty note in there. This beer isn't really too creamy. To me, it's leaning more towards the, um, the, the wheaty, bready side of things rather than anything else. I think there is a little touch of an oaty quality to the beer, though. In the very centre of your palate, there's a little touch of, uh, of brown sugar. Definitely, and for me, the brown sugary notes are, again, it's a little bit biscuity, but there is a little bit of a slightly richer caramel in there also, and as, the, as you go further into the aftertaste, the centre of your palate just kind of dries out a little bit, and you get more of the kind of grainy notes coming out of the biscuity side of things, but the malt base in this beer is really nice, and I always like this when you try New England IPAs from, um, from different breweries, you always get little different nuances, some people like to put more oats in it, some people like to have a little bit of a caramel in there just to sweeten it up a little bit, but you know, the, the malt base of this beer is really solid, and you'll know if you've watched the channel before, I always like beers that have a good malty presence to them, and this one certainly does. In fairness though, when it's 8.5%, you'd be a bit disappointed if it didn't have that. Um, but yeah, hoppy side of things then. Um, back corners of the palate, for me a little touch of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, there's a little bit of a herbal and florally note there. Um, yeah, earthy, a little bit herbal and then more floral on the front corners of the palate. Round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and more um, and more grassy for me. The, the green side of the hops and the flavour is leaning more towards the grassy side of things, I'll say that. Um, but the quality of this beer is, um, is really pretty good, make no mistake about that. This is a nicely done New England IPA and again it's cool to see these sort of styles appearing in South Korea. This is one of the first uh, New England IPAs that I've tried actually in, uh, in South Korea. The other one that I had was at Wild Waves Tap Room in Gwangan, which was, was good as well. Yeah. So, on the fruity side of things then, this is where this beer gets quite interesting. Um, if you go, you always get the fruity side of the beer out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of your tongue. Towards the back of the tongue, for me, definitely a little bit of that slightly stronger, more pungent passion fruit flavour. As you come further forward from that, I think it evolves to be a little bit sort of mango-y. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a kind of pineapple-y note to this beer as well. Papayas, apricots, something like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of tropical fruit kind of coming out in this one, and if you come towards the very front uh, part of your palate, it's almost like there's just a little kind of bit of lime or something like that in the beer too. Um, so, you know, it's, it's actually quite difficult to guess the hops in this one. As I always say to you, I do like guessing the hops that are in beers, and I, I'm tempted to say it might be Galaxy and Citra that would be in here. There could be a little bit of mosaic or something like that. There is almost a little touch of a slightly orangey flavour. And the beer, like I say, the level of complexity makes me think Galaxy and Citra. I'm going, I, I might, yeah, I'll go for those ones. I might be completely wrong, but I suspect there might be Galaxy and Citra in here because you get a bit of limey quality out of it, which is one of the, the complexities you can get from Citra. Um, it's got the passion fruity notes, which is the kind of telltale sign of, of Galaxy. Um, and you've got a bit of mango, which is one of the, the telltale signs of Citra. So if I was to guess, I would say perhaps Citra and Galaxy in this one, which is uh, it's nice. There could be a little touch of mosaic or something, because there is a wee bit of an orange in there. Um, but you know, it's, um, it's an interesting beer, this one, and I do like how it comes across. So for me, this one gets a thumbs up. We've had our fun with Guess the Hops, but in terms of uh, comparing this to the New England IPAs, pardon me, I've had from other countries, this one is really pretty solid. Um, Yeah, and I mean these guys, and, and they said British nationals. I'm guessing they're they're English going by their names and stuff. Might be wrong on that, but um, there's some really solid New England IPAs coming out of England these days. You know, Cloudwater, Verdant, um, Northern Monk, a couple of other ones who's uh, Magic Rock and things. You know, some of these breweries that aren't coming quite to mind at the moment. Um, but you know, this one actually does remind me quite a lot of the English New England IPAs that I've had. It's a bit more thick and wet and oily in its mouthfeel. Um, I would describe this beer as being, you know, pretty full bodied to be honest. Carbonation is very smooth, big oily mouthfeel as I said. In terms of IBUs, um, 
I think you're talking about 50 IBUs with this beer, so it does have a little bit more of a bitter kick to it than some of the New England IPAs that you're going to come across. Although in fairness, on second thought, I think it's just a little touch lower than that. Um, it might be about 40 IBUs, to be honest with you. I don't think it's quite as high as 50. That's an overestimate. Yeah, go with 40 IBUs in this beer, somewhere in that kind of region. So, um, malt base, like I said, very, very smooth. It does smooth out the more that you drink of this beer. It's got a little degree of sweetness to it as well. And the malt base, for me, like I said, is very, very well balanced. Um, hoppy bitterness, we said, was 40 IBUs. And it's got a lovely, juicy, fruity quality to it there. But it does have a little bit of pungency from those darker tropical fruit notes. But again, another very, very solid beer that I've tried from Gorilla Brewing Company. And it was cool to try one of their more... Um, adventurous beers, should we say, uh, compared to the ones that are their core range beers. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame if they do a beer of this quality. It's a bit of a shame if this is only a one-off or whatever, so hopefully that's one that makes it into their core range at some point, because I have been quite impressed with it. But yeah, um, let's leave it at that for this one. Another really solid New England IPA, and it's very encouraging to see what the future holds for Korean craft beer if this is the things they're producing at the moment and beer's only been around here for you know like five years something like that so if they're this far forward this early on then I think it'll be exciting to see what they do moving further uh, moving further down the road but yeah and um, this one was the hop bomb a New England style double IPA coming in at 8.5 percent from Gorilla Brewing here in Busan in South Korea really pleased to be able to review this one for you I really enjoyed it and if you get the chance check out this one and some of the other beers that they do the raspberry Weizen, incidentally or uh, raspberry wheat beer I can't remember exactly what they called it and um, that's a pretty damn good beer to have a go at as well and I do have one of their stouts that you'll see me review in a couple couple of videos time and hopefully that's another very solid one as well but yeah thank you again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from gorilla brewing company as well check out my vi my uh, bar video visit that i did and uh, yeah check out some of their beers if you get the chance thanks again for watching let me know your own thoughts on this one and i will catch you guys very soon slander school gone bay